in the office. So today we'll be dealing with um, asset condition assets, uh, facility condition assessment. And we've gone through all this yesterday, like the same way we had it on Wednesday, we're still going to have the same thing today. So I assume we've started the class now. By 10 minutes to six, we're going to have 10 minute break. Uh, we'll converge by again by six o'clock. By 6.40, we'll be rounding up the class while we go to question and answer session. So that is how today is going to be as well. So what are the objectives of this module? The objective of this module is to prepare every student to ensure that every student understands the meaning of facility condition assessment, the purpose the reason why facility condition assessment is being conducted, the scope of carrying, facility, carrying out facility condition assessment and the process it takes in doing facility condition assessment. Levels, there are three levels of facility condition assessment which we will discuss. Then facility performance evaluation. evaluation. Performance evaluation and condition assessment are more or less, they almost look alike, but the only difference between the two is that performance evaluation can be done on a weekly basis, can be done on a monthly basis, can be done on a quarterly basis, but condition assessment is once, in, once often, majorly when you are taking up a new facility, as a facility man, uh, man, management company on behalf of a third party, you need to do condition assessment to ascertain what are the conditions of the current asset within that facility. You need to assess the building uh, foundation structure, the building envelope, the roofing system, your transportation system, which include your walkways, your staircase, your lift, the electrical system, mechanical system, and your HVAC as well. So you need to assess them to know what are their current conditions before you're actually going to put your pen on the paper and sign an agreement to start maintaining that facility then. How do you design your facility condition assessment format? And what are the tools? What do you need to have before you can carry out condition assessment? So. By the end of this mode, you should be able to know how to do a facility condition assessment. And these are the five areas we shall be dealing with today. We're going to do a brief introduction into what is referred to as condition assessment, then the purpose of condition assessment, the scope of facility condition assessment, process of facility condition assessment, and facility condition assessment, documentation, and review. These are the five course content we shall be looking into today. So we have some terminology that we might be coming across in the course of this module. One is FCI stand for facility condition is index. Why FC stand for condition assessment? O and M is operation and maintenance. MEP, we used to call it MIE, is mechanical, electrical, and plumbing. Then we are talking about the building system. Building system includes plumbing system, electrical system, mechanical system, the roofing system, foundational system, and transportation system. A schedule of the application is a document prepared and negotiated by parties mostly landlord and tenants, setting out the work that needs to be done. Then we have facility performance evaluation. These are all terminologies that you might be coming across in the course of this module. Then what is a facility condition assessment? I need us to pay attention to some key words here. The word inspect, inspecting, the word understand, and the word condition. They are very, very key when you are defining condition assessment. The process of inspecting each system in a building 
Why do you inspect? To ascertain, to understand, to know what exactly you are dealing with, the condition of that particular facility, the current condition, and what are those conditions in terms of deficiency. With the level of the deficiency, with the level of uh, with the level of defects that you find out during your assessment, you can use this to determine what will actually be the remaining useful life of that particular uh, facility. Then you can use that at the same time to calculate your facility condition index. With your facility condition index, you'll be able to determine if the facility is still in good order or that facility is already due for demolition. And when you want to do condition assessment, don't forget, it is a multidisciplinary review of various systems of a building, of a facility. Why is it multidisciplinary? Most of the time when you want to conduct this, it's just like, let me use the domestic example. Um, I needed a three bedroom apartment. And I'm using Mr. Kalu. Mr. Kalu happened to be the the landlord, why Madam Grace happened to be the uh, house agent. The first thing we're going to do is that it is not me that I happen to be the tenant alone that will assess the facility. It has to be myself, possibly the landlord, and the estate, yeah, the house agent. Why? Because of each and every participant during assessment has a role to play. And when I said the tile work is not in good shape, the landlord might say, okay, no, let's do another tiling work. And the agent will say, okay, if you're going to do another tiling work, this might increase the rent. That's the reason why it's a multidisciplinary review of various systems of a facility. And that's why if the facility is owned by your company and you are into FM. This is still necessary. If you happen to be a new employee with that FM company and the FM company is the owner of the property, you need to do condition assessment. Why do you have to do this? You have to do this so that you know exactly what are the problems you are actually going to be dealing with in that facility. You'll be able to understand what are those things that need an immediate attention? What are those things that can be deferred? What are those things that can be put on hold as a result of lack of finance? So, and when you conduct your assessment, it provides you recommendation regarding the root cause of deterioration or the failure. It unfolds the reason why that particular asset is deteriorating. It revealed to you what are the challenges you are actually going to face within that facility when you take over. And that's the reason why it is very, very essential. If your company is going to manage a property or a facility on behalf of a client, it is expedient before you allow your company to sign the agreement to first of all, carry out an assessment of the entire facility and come up with their report. Give the report to the, what, the property owner. Let him decide. Either you have to carry out the repair work while you build in, or he's going to carry out the repair work with his own engineering team while you take over from there. After you are satisfied that the work done is excellent. Then, when you do your assessment, it also helps you to provide remedial action plan. Because when you do your assessment, you know what are those things that you need to attend to immediately. What are those things that you can what, repair? What are those things that are actually default as pure replacement? Then it also helps you to reproduce capital replacement plan. I could remember there was a particular time within our uh, facility that we needed to change all our CFM lights to LED. And then, and then, we know that we cannot, we don't have that capacity, we don't have that financial capacity to change all the CFL lights at the same time. But what we do is that 
we come out, I will start changing them in phase. These are part of what you get when you do your condition assessment. Then it also helps you to determine what are those money you need to like separate or put aside, which is going to help you in supporting your operation and maintenance, which is going to be the money you're going to be spending day in, day out to keep that facility in good condition. So what is the benefit of condition assessment? One, you'll be able to determine short-term financial needs because by the time you complete your analysis, you do the summary of everything and you are assigned cost to each of those defects that you observe, that you discover during your assessment. When you assign cost to them, this is actually going to tell you the one that are capitally intensive and the one that you can like plan over a two year period of time or over a five years period of time. Then competitive bid. Most of, for instance, most of us that are into real estate, one of the, one of the things that determine your KPI is the influx of tenants into that estate. Because in most scenario, as a facility manager in real estate, the number of tenants that occupy that estate the time is also your KPI because that is what the estate is actually being built for. The estate is not actually being built to be completely what empty. So now, if you now discover that there are people going to estate A, why people are not coming to your estate, you could do your assessment. One of the reasons why people are going to that place could be as a result of the fact that there is excellent security network or possibly there is always power supply, or possibly the estate is having an aesthetic looking, or possibly there is road asset, or possibly proximity to what? Market. So by the time you do your assessment, and you discover that, oh, this is the reason why people are moving into this estate rather than my own estate, then this can help you to determine competitively. Then long-term mandate. Long-term mandates are when you do your assessment, you do the summary of duty, you assign costs, and you know that there are some of those costs that are capitally intensive. So you can like plan them against maybe another calendar year, or you did do them in phase-wise manner. Then build this to us. You know, you prioritize the strategic alignment. Strategic alignment is whatsoever assessment you do, don't forget it must be in tune and in line with the entire organization goal. Your assessment and your summary and everything you need to put in place after your assessment must not be outside the strategic goal of the entire organization. And when you, what are the benefits of your facility condition assessment? The condition assessment can, you, with your assessment. You can easily create asset register when you do your condition assessment. Then you're able to prepare engineering description and specification for system and component. For instance, when you assess your lead or you assess your staircase, you discover that your staircase doesn't have Andre. This could be part of your what? Part of your report that there is a need or need for Andre. What is going to be the length of the Andre you are going to put in that place? What is going to be the diameter of the pipe you are going to use? What's going to be the diameter of the pipe you are going to use? What are the materials? Do you want to use my steel or you want to use stainless steel? These are all necessary engineering specifications. Then you identify and record the existing condition of the component. So you, ask, you assess each of the components within that facility, one after the other. And you pen down the, the, the uh, current condition. And maybe there is a leakage on the wall that is a, uh, the facade is already giving way. You have a lot of force ceiling. You have a lot of POP ceiling damage. You have floor tiling wall giving ways. These are all things that you itemize during your assessment. And most of the time, the reason why it is multidisciplinary is that at times it could require you to take the support or the service of a structural engineer to help you test for the integrity of the columns and beams within that facility. 
It could require you to take the service of an architect to help you redesign and give the estate a facelift. It could require you at times to take the support of an electrical engineer or a, 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 an M and P expert who will help you to assess the transformer within that facility and tell you the condition of that transformer. If that transformer can still be reused or that transformer stands for an outright replacement, it could require you to take this service support of generator expert who will assess the generator, deep assessment, tell you their findings and give you their recommendation. And that's why it is always a multidisciplinary. And at times you want to conduct it on your own without taking the support of an external service provider. It could be you, yourself, your supervisors, your plumber, your electrical guy, your mechanical guy, all of you, your air conditioning guy. All this team together alongside with you will carry out the assessment and everybody will come up with their report. The report is being submitted to you as the facility manager. You summarize the report, you assign cost to it. After assigning cost, you can now prioritize which one is actually you what you can defer now, and which one do you need to like attend to, which is very, very urgent. Then to determine the remaining useful life of the component, you can decide, oh, you can, let's just use this one this year. By next year, when we're doing the budgeting, we're going to plan the placement of that. To prepare cost estimate related to maintenance and repair, reliability or renewal of the system. So when you do your assessment and you come up with your summary, you can now send your what vendors out to those locations to give you quotation, uh, repair quotation, replacement quotation for those items. So you can now prepare an estimated cost. What will take you to do the overall painting of the entire facility? What will be the cost of replacing the entire pavement within that facility? What will be the cost of replacing the entire interlocking within that facility? And what will be the cost of repairing the 200 kVA, the 500 kVA generator that you're having there? And what will be the cost of after replacement? Then to prioritize the component for repair and maintenance and all renewal. Then when you summarize, when you do the summary of your assessment, you'll be able to know which one do you need to attend to urgently, that you know that you have the financial capacity to tackle. And the one that you don't have the financial capacity, can you defer them? Can you delay them? Or can you ask an external vendor to come around, take over, repair it, maintain it while you pay them on an instrumentally, possibly on a monthly basis, probably on a quarterly basis. Then to compare the cost of system and component remedial versus the cost of facility replacement. With that, you have the cost of repair at hand. And you can also take the cost of what? Ultra replacement. You know, I said it on where is the one we're doing asset management. You compare. If the cost of replacement is almost equivalent to the cost of repair, it is of economic importance for you to go ahead and do an outright replacement instead of spending money. And eventually, you still have to like replace. So what are the elements? What are those things that you assess when you do your condition assessment? The building interior. And what do you find in the building interior? The, the interior wall, suspended ceiling, your POP, your uh, pendant light, your plumbing network, your furniture fittings, your tile floor ties, your air condition. Then the site, civil site development and amenity like your pavement, your entrance, your transportation system, your walkways, staircase, lift, document review. You have your drones to review. And don't forget, I told us on Wednesday that there is a clear difference between as built drawing and engineering drawing. You get the engineering drawing, that's what the architect will give you that you are going to use during the project period. Then the as built drawing comes after the completion of the project. And that is the only drawing that will tell you that there has been an amendment on the beam, on the column, on the plumbing network, on the electrical network, which is different from what the engineering drawing is saying. So you only use the as built drawing to do operation and maintenance within a facility, not the engineering drawing. Then you can you assess your fire protection as life safety regulation as well. Your mechanical equipment like your uh, extractor fan, if you have any your wall mounted extractor fan, then your plumbing network, your WC, the plumbing fittings and everything. You check everything 
one at a time. Then the structure, this is talking about the foundational structure. And at times you could have a differential uh, foundational structure where one side is lower and the other side is higher. And that's why you see at times when you are walking around a swampy area, you see a building that appears as if it's floating on the surface of that um, swampy area. Give it like a year plus, you discover that the building has been sinking up to the window level. These are all what you need to like assess before you take over a facility. Preliminary review and on-site observation then, product production process packaging equipment. Most especially if you find yourself in oil and gas environment, there's no how you won't need to do this. So what are the strategic and financial benefits for facility condition assessment? One, it helps you to improve facility data. So you have the detailed information at your disposal. So at any point in time, if anybody asks you, why do you want to change this pumping machine? You can easily tell the person, well, this is the picture of the pumping machine. This is looking deteriorated already. And the last time we operated it, we discovered that the temperature is excessive. So you have justifiable information at your hand to defend your expenditure. Then it also defines facility problem. With this, with your assessment, you can have the entire facility problem in your what at the tip of your finger. So even when they wake you up in the midnight, you can tell them these are the challenges we're facing within that facility. Then it also helps you to gather defensible data for justifying what capital expenditure, most especially when you require for attract replacement. And somebody asks you why. But when you provide all the necessary information, when you put on ground all the necessary data, there's no how your approval will not scale through. Then it also helps you to streamline facility management and improve, improve facility condition as well. So you know where you need to deploy your resources. Allow facility personnel to better plan, manage, and direct work because you know the problem that you are having in each and every every point within the facility. Okay, maybe in block A, we're having a WC that we need to replace. In block C, we have one suspended ceiling uh, mounted light that we need to change. Just like that same way. So you know how to map plan, how to manage and direct your work, your uh, work. Then it also helps you to prioritize short time planning issues because you know areas where you need to replace a, a generator and area where you need to replace just an ordinary electric bulb. So, and those electric bulbs are more or really less like a short time plan issue. But when you're talking about buying a 2000 kV generator, it is it has to take some period of time. It is not something that you can take up immediately. So, you can prioritize without you can prioritize your long term financial planning and you can prioritize your, your short term plan as well. So when you conduct facility condition assessment, what do you start to, on, to gain? It helps you to understand what are you dealing with, what is in your portfolio, and what is the current condition of those items within that facility. Then it also gives you visibility into the appropriate level of capital funding for each building and across the portfolio. So you know how much you are going to be spending, like block A, Flat number one. These are the detail of the maintenance work that I needed to carry out in that block. Then so you'll be able to like what um, assign cost to it. Then prioritization of facility capital plan that align with organization missions and goals. So you'll be able to prioritize and don't forget everything you want to do must be in the poor view. It must be in supportive, uh, it must be supportive to the entire company strategic plan and to the entire company strategic goal. If you are maintaining facility for a client, you are to abide by the or, or your own organization mission and goal, not the client organization vision and goal because their own vision is different. Fine, you are maintaining a facility for them. They have their own vision and mission. You are working for your own company. So the the vision and mission of your company is quite different from their own. So you'll be able to prioritize facility capital plan that must be in alignment with your organization mission and goal. Then it also helps you to identify deficiency and 
how to estimate the cost of correcting those deficiencies. The deficiency would be that you are having a lot of leakages at the first floor, and this is actually affecting the, uh, the, 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 the ground floor. And it's getting the ground floor messy, and people are not willing to pay for that flat. You need to get quickly something quickly done. That means you need to address the leakage at that first floor. First floor. And what is the purpose of facility condition assessment? What do you start to gain when you do this? It helps you to establish current repair costs. Then, when you heard about facility condition index, facility condition index is being calculated as the total repair cost. The total repair cost currently, assuming. Um, I have a boiler in an hotel that I'm maintaining. And after I've assessed that boiler, I know this is how much I'm going to spend on that boiler. But how do I determine if that facility is still in good condition? If I have to use facility condition index, facility condition index says that the total cost of repair divided by total replace, current total replacement value multiply by 100. Total repair cost divided by current replacement value multiplied by 100. That gives you, that is, that gives you, that is how to calculate your facility condition index. Uh, when you do your calculation and you have between zero and two, your facility is excellent. If you have between two and 4%, it is uh, up to 5%, it is good. Between five to 10% fair, but anything above 10% is telling you that that facility is in the poorest state. At this junction, you either decide to either do a remedial work and give that facility a kind of a facelift, or you do what is referred to as demolition and you construct the facility to your own taste. Mm -hmm. So it also, it helps you to what? Establish current repair cost. Then how do you do that? You'll be able to evaluate the deficiency, the cost of the deficiency within that facility. Then you'll be able to evaluate the current repair cost of correcting those deficiencies. Then you'll be able to create prioritized list of repair. You can have up to 50 repair work to be carried out. Then you need to put priority on them. You're taking off a facility for the first time. You don't just go ahead and start fixing the air condition or fixing the pumps or fixing the bowl without fixing your what your generator. So you need power first after that because you still need power to test all these gadgets that I just mentioned. So you'll be able to prioritize when you do your assessment. Then establishing a budget that will be successful in controlling first why the first why the most critical deficiency are resolved. So when you do your assessment and you come up with your summary, first thing first is that you consider cost. What are those things that you know you can afford now? Those are the first ones that you key into and you get them done. Then those other ones you can define them maybe like in the next two months, in the next three months, in the next one year, you're going to like attend to them. Then it also helps you to forecast the future cost. Just like let me take uh uh, the Toyota Corolla, for instance, if your company has a Toyota Corolla, if the Toyota Corolla engine lasted you for um, four years before you start thinking about replacing the engine, and uh, you know that when you bought the Corolla, going by Nigerian factor, when you bought the Corolla, the Corolla engine was still around 250,000 naira. But now, when you are replacing the engine, you put the engine at four hundred and fifty thousand. You can use that percentage to calculate and determine that okay, in the next four years again, if I'm going to change this car engine, this is the expected amount that it's the engine might cost me. So you have, it helps you to forecast the future cost. Then, by understanding future deficiencies, just as important that as as calculating the building current condition. Forecast cost by breaking down a building into individual components. How do you do this? When you build, break, break up a building into individual components, 
have a block of flats. And within that block, you have six bedroom, six three bedroom flats. So you can take each of those blocks one after the other. The first floor, uh, the ground floor has two flats. First floor has two flats. The second floor has two flats. You can say block one, flat one. Then within that flat, what are those things you're going to do? You check the toilet separately, bedroom separately, wardrobe. You check every item separately. So you can now say, okay, for bedroom, I am spending 10,000 Naira. For toilet, I have just only flexible water to replace. I'm spending just only 5,000 Naira. For the kitchen, I'm spending 1 million Naira because I have to replace the marble top. I have to do floor tiling work. I have to replace the suspended ceiling. I'm spending 1 million Naira. Then for the living room, I'm spending 10 million Naira because I need to change the entire floor, do a fresh POP, then um, change the lighting, the uh, chandelas. I have to change the floor tiles and I have to change all the electrical fittings within that place. So this is then at the end of the day, you summarize how much are you going to spend in the bedroom, how much is toilet, how much is kitchen, how much is... So you can summarize everything and come up with a single complete sum of what's going to take you to get everything within that facility done. So you, that is how you break your what? You break your building into individual components. Then establish both short and long-term budget by estimating the life of the building system, calculating the forecast cost based on their representative portion of the building's total replacement value. So when the replacement, after you have done this, you need to still calculate, okay, if I have to replace this facility, how much will it cost me? But when you discover that the cost of revamp or repute or facelift is far, far cheaper than the cost of replacement, why not? You can go ahead and do a kind of what the media will give the building a facelift. And that's why you see you walk up to some uh you walk to some uh estate. You discover that the whole entire estate is not yet fully occupied. What most real estate agent does is that they take the they, they, they try as much as possible to complete like 10 buildings or 10 blocks of flats. After they have completed them, they rent them out. The money they recoup from that renter, they use it to like continue the project work. So it also helps you to maintain building data by forecast. You're able to what forecast, determine the current and historical data from previous work assessment. That is if result assessment is. Uh, Mr. Yovami, you can you need to check your internet because I I want to believe everybody can hear me clear and loud. Please kindly confirm if you can hear me very well because somebody said very, 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 very clear. Very clear. Okay. Very clear. Mr. Yovami, I need to yeah, check yeah, your yeah, internet. Yeah. Yes, okay. okay, very good. Include a current set of typical deficiency and the best correction for them. Use of cost model life cycle analysis to assign the life expectancy for all building systems. Don't forget that I've already explained to us what a life cycle is. What is the life cycle cost? The cost you incur during the uh, installation and commissioning, operation and maintenance, disposal, decommissioning of an asset. That is the life cycle. So when you use cost model life cycle analysis to assign life expectancy for an asset, that means that, okay, this asset has been commissioned. This estate was built in so, 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 so quick. And this estate is expected, building are expected to last for maybe 100 years. And from the date of commissioning, this building has spent is over 80 years. So you can easily forecast, you can easily predict that in the next 10 to 20 years, this building will give way. So you can, with that, you can start making your what, your capital plan on how to either how to get the building, uh, how to get the building, giving a facelift or demolish the building and reconstruct freshly. Then the other aspect you gain is that it helps you to plan energy efficient system, and that's why you see at time when you conduct your uh, assessment, possibly you could discover that the roofing sheet that you are having on the roof are completely the olden days roofing sheet. Yeah, with your assessment, you can go green. Now we have roofing sheet that can last you for hundreds of years without having an issue. We have the corrugated roofing, uh, corrugated roof. We have the, 
we have the, the series, uh, several numbers of sizes. You have 0 0.5, 0 0.45, 0 0.75, 1 mm thickness. We have a lot. Then you can decide, okay, sorry, since these building have been on complete national grid, why can't we go on solar? And solarize the whole entire building. Or you can decide if you happen to be Somebody drop a question, please. Find that question down. By the time we're doing question and answer, please bring it up. So pertain to you so that we can quickly uh, do justice to today's uh, module. Mr. Okakama, please pull your question down so that at least at the end of the class, I will attend to you. So I'll, you'll be the first person I'm going to call at the end of the class. So possibly you discover that when you do your assessment, the whole entire building are still using the olden day incandescent lamp, which are for. You can part of your gold grain is you can decide that okay, I'm going to use LED. Or possibly, instead of using the normal faca, I'm going to use um I'm going to use solar panel. So whatsoever power I can generate from that solar panel, I will use to power my external lighting and common area lighting. These are areas where you can go green. Oh, the type of the air conditioning system we're having in that facility are those olden days air condition that when you are using them, they consume more of power compared to the new technology that we're having in place now. So you can decide that, okay, for us to save or for us to go green, let's remove this Asian air conditioning and put this inverter-based air conditioning that can save us cost. These are all decisions you can make. These are all decisions you start to gain. When you do your condition uh, condition assessment, so what are the scope of carrying out facility condition assessment? One, one thing is that when you are doing your inspection, software will not go to the site to go and do inspection for you. You need to appear physical. You need to be there physically yourself. One. You do inspection to observe the general site improvements and condition of all major building systems. Then you review of building documents. And what are those building documents? You have build drawing, your building record, your construction documents, your building codes and violations, your maintenance record. These are all what can help you when you are doing your condition assessment. And I try as much as possible to uh, uh, advise my facility, um, my facility um, professional colleagues that try as much as possible, even if it's just only one single pamphlet that you find in any equipment that you bought after installation, please don't throw it away. Get a file, an act file, perforate it and put all those manual there. Those manual will be very useful because you could even from those manner draw up your preventive maintenance, your uh, predictive maintenance, and your um, um, reliability center maintenance for your equipment. But most of the time, once we uncreate our asset from the equipment, we throw those manners away. And don't let us always allow this assertion to come to pass that the best way to hide anything for a black man is to put it in pen and paper. Don't throw your equipment manuals away. Get a file, file them. And once in a while, you could refer to them for a vital information as time goes on, because most of the time, those manuals contain your warranty status. They have the equipment spare part number. How many months of warranty do you have on that particular spare part? Let's take cognizance of this, please. It's very, very key. Then production of detail or list of schedule of adaptation. This schedule of adaptation is not really like when, like all these banking, uh, all these banks, when they, when they, when you, when they lease, when you lease out your property to them, part of what is going to be to form part of the, the schedule of adaptation is that they are going to actually alter the interior structure of that uh, building. But in your schedule of adaptation, you are going to itemize that that structure must be returned back to its original shape after the expiration of the lease period. But most of the time, some banks convert it, they monetize it, so that by the time they are going, they pay you. 
any amount of money that you guys agreed on that will be enough, sufficient enough to return the building back to its original shape. The part of the schedule of dilapidation is that you will need to rent an apartment. And when you get to that apartment, you call that you don't like the color of the tiling room. You can tell the, uh, the landlord, sir, I don't like the color of this um, tiles. For me to take this building, I need this tiles replaced. The landlord will say, okay, fine. I can agree. It's going to be an agreement between you and either the laser or the laser. It's going to be an agreement. And the agreement is that, okay, I am going to change the tiles, but that is going to increase your rent. This is the percentage that this is going to add to your rent. Oh, sorry, this is the percentage I'm going to pay. Or the landlord can say, okay, go ahead, get the tax replaced, and remove that cost as part uh, out of your next rental cost. These are details of what you see in what is called the schedule of the location. A schedule of the location is a description of any defect present in the building. For new projects, you often refer to this as snag list. And until when the contractor completed the snag list, is 15% retention is not being released to him. It's a list. It lists the problem with the maintenance of a building. A schedule of dilapidation is prepared after the completion of a condition survey. After you have done your survey, you can now get this. The, the water heater is leaking and it needs to be done. The roof is leaking. Like what somebody was jokingly said, the best time to rent out Lagos is during the rainy season so that you know if you are actually if you actually going to need a keno or you need a what a water bed it is already 6 uh, 5 um 53 so let's quickly observe a 10 minute break hello yeah, hello welcome. hello you are welcome back from the short break thank you so the last thing we discussed before we went on the, the schedule of dilapidation and developing costs of remedial work. So when you do that, an estimation of the cost to already backlog the department. You know, because when you do your assessment, you may describe that there are a lot of maintenance activity that ought to have been carried out within that facility, which are not. Then with that, you'll be able to arrive at a defensible estimate of revestment cost, how much you are actually going to put into getting that facility back into its original design shape. Identification of area of improvement. Identify any opportunity for adaptation and improvement to the facility. So with your assessment, you'll be able to identify all this. Then evaluation of condition of the asset. Evaluating the effective asset. Estimating the remaining useful life of the asset because with your assessment, it's easier for you to be able to like estimate how long will that particular asset lie, lie before it becomes sort of obsolete? Forecast future life cycle renewal of the asset as they reach the end of their useful service life. So in case you are replacing that particular asset with a new one, you can envisage and propose. This is expected number of years that this asset will last. Then to provide a benchmark for current performance of the building. These are all what you gain when you do your condition assessment. Then what are the process? What are the step-by-step -step approach when you want to do your condition assessment? The first thing is that you need to have your measuring tool in place. You need to have your instrument in place. And what are those instruments? At least minimum, your measuring devices, possibly your tape roll, your data capturing devices like your um, camera, or if you're using an Android phone, maybe you need to like extend the memory space, camera, prosthetic gear, and any other equipment that you may need. Or possibly, in case that requires the, 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 the support of an external vendor like your um, structural engineer, your M and, uh, MEP engineer, your uh, fire service engineer, your HVAC engineer. So it may require the service of these people. And that's why assessment is always a multidisciplinary kind of activity. The first step you need to do is that it is not until when you get to the site, you now start asking, what are those things I needed to do? You need to have a pre-designed checklist at hand that, okay, these are the area. These are what you are going to check when you get to site. The time assessment book, select assessment team and mobilization of the team. 
do you need an external third party service provider to join your team or you are actually carrying this out with only your team alone plan inspection and arrange site assets they are the site asset you may not be the one that is going to all have access to the main entrance gate to the old estate so you need to know who is having the key so that by the time you get there you have the assets and don't forget time is of essential as well in case you want to assess a roof uh, ruby system you can't enter within the ceiling at the peak hour of the day when the intensity of the sun is on the uh, uh, at the peak you have to do that as early as possible maybe between the hour of 7 a.m in the morning and 10 a.m in the morning so do you need necessary approval to get this done so these are all what you need to put in place before you start thinking about going. Then when you have set all the pre-plan, then you move to site. When you get to site, you carry out the inspection. Prepare inspection form, conduct inspection, prepare finding and conclusion reports. And what are the collection data techniques? User survey, interview, document review, satisfaction survey and survey questionnaire. You can send questionnaires out for people to fill that questionnaire. And when you pull it that questionnaire, you sit with it, summarize everything, and come with your word, with your necessary information that you are going to use to defend your data. Or you can interview some of the facility staff who have been operating the facility before, or some of the contractors who participated in the construction of that facility. Destructive testing on the asset. There are two types of uh, testing you can do. You can do non-destructive and you can do destructive testing. Destructive is when you, um, for instance, let me use a domestic example. You take a tire to a organizer and you ask the organizer to keep injecting pressure into the tire. The exact pressure that the organizer injected and it destroyed the tire, that is a, the maximum <clears throat> The maximum, the maximum air pressure that that tire can take. So when you do destructive testing, that means that is telling you it will give you the maximum. And that's the reason why you see in most buildings they will tell you the maximum load capacity you can put on that building. They tell you the maximum number of high rise that you can go, the number of floor you can go. You can't go more than three floor. You can't go more than what four floor. And they will tell you with engineering terms that if this go beyond this, it's going to destroy the entire building. And the can as well tells you that this building cannot use more than 10 horsepower impeller pump to take water to the 10th floor. And if you do more than that, it's going to cause a lot of leakages. These are part of what you can do. Condition monitoring, selection of appropriate reinvestment formula for calculation of maintenance and budget. These are all what you stand to gain when you do your condition assessment. And when you have done your assessment, you have to summarize all the information you've done as well. When you summarize, then you evaluate your inspection, prepare summary of the report, compile your data, and send your vendors out to go and assess the job and give you quotation. When they send the quotation, assign cost to each of those items that you have uh, already itemized, and you have the total cost of the, how much you are going to spend within the whole facility. When you are presenting your finding to the management, you communicate your finding, you select final report, design presentation, gain support from the management. It is until when management give an approval to your presentation, that's when you can now execute and carry out all your remedial or replacement or your assessment. If you don't have the management approval, there's no any repair work or remedial work that you can carry out. Then you now put the assessment to work. That is after you have gained management what approval. So this is a sample of facility condition assessment checklist. This checklist is looking at the entire facility in system-wise manner. You can see you have electrical system, you have security and safety system, you can see you have mechanical system, you have power system, building fabrics, and other system. Then there is a, this is another type, and this is looking at the this one breaks the old facility into component wise. And that's why you see the account office. What is the challenge in the account office? Electrical system. Uh, what is the description of the asset? Ceiling mounted fitting. What is the condition of the asset? 
condition is if pay. What is the description of the defect? Broken fitting cover. Uh, cover. Then, what is the scale of the condition in terms of minor and major? Is a minor. Their recommendation. You place the fitting cover. Then you cannot put. If you want to design your own. You cannot put another column here and assign that one as what cost or add another one to it as date of date on which the repair was carried out. So there is no any word standard format when it's come to a particular condition assessment um, checklist. You can design your own in line with what is the uh, assessment you want to carry it out. I think that is a sample with a baraka at least. You can liaise with baraka. She's going to actually share the sample with you. So what are the level of carrying out condition assessment? We have the drive-by, we have the drive-through, and you have the pro-through. Uh, let me also give another example so that we can understand this very well. If you're coming all the way from a Bali, you already have it in mind that you won't need to buy a used Nigerian car. And you are coming from a Bali, getting towards uh, a different area here, but you see one car that has been displayed by the road. And that is the exact model of the car that you wanted to buy. And you see the phone number of the seller. You call the seller and you ask for the price. You pay and you buy the car. The second one is the drive through You park your car. You walk around the car. You call the seller. You negotiate. You procure the car. The third one is crawl through You park your car. You assess the interior, the exterior of the car. You collected the car, you start the car, you drove the car by some a kilometer, drove back, applied brake, and checked everything, you negotiate and you pay. The three of them are means of assessment, but it's just only that one is more of more detail than the other. When you do drive by, it's a high level review that focuses primarily on the system level with less detail applied to condition of the individual asset or component within that facility. It's also a method of collecting data by approaching the, by approaching the facility at the system level. And that's why you see here, this is an example of a drive by, because it's saying the facility at a system level. Then you have the walkthrough assessment. It's a colloquial expression of the mid range, just like a mid between what? The drive-by and the crawl through. You also use the walkthrough to collect your what? Data at the same time. But the best among them, and I can give you a detailed data and detailed information, is the crawl through. It is a rigorous assessment of the asset that is carried out as a component level assessment or bottom-up assessment, because you take each of the components one after the other, you assign cost to them, bring them together in collective form and in the total team of the whole facility. The assessment team spend more time on the field of conservation. Then the, the difference between the crawl through and the crawl through assessment advantage and disadvantage. The advantage stand as detailed information can be put out when you do the assessment. Then you have at your disposal actionable word, data. But the only side, other side of it is that it is very, very expensive because at times it will require you to get a third party to participate in the assessment. And the company might not be having the money to spend in order to carry out that kind of assessment as at that time. Then it is time consuming. And most of the time, often, it may not be necessary on some words, on some assets, not all assets. Then facility performance evaluation. You know, initially when we started, I told us that performance evaluation and condition assessment almost look alike. But condition assessment is something that you check possibly before you take over a facility or before you rent out, before you rent an apartment. But performance evaluation is more or less like you are evaluating the performance of the entire facility. And why do you do this? The reason why you do this is you want to know area where you're having gaps, just like gap analysis, where you're having gap. The area where you actually needed improvement, the area where you need, where you have leakages. Where are those areas where there are leakages that you need to block those leakages? Where are those areas that you need improvement in order to 
make sure that you gain an influx of um, tenants into the facility. Then you can do it externally and you can do it internally. You can do it externally to compare your facility with industrial practice, and that is called benchmarking. But when you do it internally, it's called gap analysis. You want to analyze to see gaps. The gap could be in your work management structure. The gap could be in your lead KPIs. The gap could be in your leading metrics. The gap could be in your maintenance work management processes. The gap could be in your procurement processes. So this could be affecting the performance of the entire facility. And this is the reason why you do performance evaluation. What is facility performance evaluation? An extension, an extension of what had been called post-occupancy evaluation. You know, you do condition assessment before you occupy the facility. You get a lot of things done before you move in. But after you move in, you can now start doing evaluation, evaluating the facility. What have they been providing in terms of security? What have they been providing in terms of power? Water-wise, environment-wise, then even human management. Do they just bump into your uh, into your apartment and start asking for rent? Are they diplomatic in their way of doing things? This is where performance evaluation comes in. FP is a continuous process of systematic evaluating. Why FCA is a one of thing of a thing. The performance and or effectiveness of one or more aspects of the building in relation to issues such as accessibility, aesthetic, cost effectiveness, functionality, productivity, safety, security, and sustainability. That is what performance evaluation is telling you. When you do performance evaluation, you better understand the impact of early design delivery decision on long-term efficiency, effectiveness of the building, then it also helps you to understand the impact of the building delivery process and decisions. How are you buying in terms of delivery people, uh, delivery boost to end users? Are they getting water as at when due? Because maybe it has formed part of the agreement that there's going to be 24 hour power supply. Are you actually providing that 24 hour power supply? You can assess to see what you are actually doing. And with your assessment, in terms of evaluation, you can evaluate with that. You'll be able to know area where you need improvement, area where you can, what are those things that you are currently doing that you need to sustain? And what are those things that you are currently doing that is costing you huge amount of cost that you need to drop? Then it extends beyond fiscal assessment and including, it includes consideration of obsolescence and other such as what well, qualitative what factors. Then when you want to when you want to do performance evaluation during the applying phase, it consists of you need to prepare a document of what exactly you want people to assess you on. You can do a mini survey and send the survey to the tenant to rank to rate you in terms of security uh, in terms of security uh, uh, apparatus within that facility. And by the time you receive the survey, you sit down with the service, you diagnose the service, you summarize it, and you come up with your defensible data and you see how you can improve. And from what the survey tells you, you can see area where you need to sustain, where you are excellently performing very well. You need to sustain that. Area where you are performing lower, you need to like improve. And what are not necessary, you need to like expand them and inject some new processes as well. Report the finding of the analysis and all your analysis, you need to communicate back to what? To the tenant as well. Recommending action, monitoring and review the outcome of any source action undertaken. So when you inject some new action, when you inject some new processes, when you inject some new management structures, you need to keep monitoring this in order to see that it is being implemented. And when it is implemented, you need to do what is called enforcement so that people don't revert back in doing it again. Outcomes are very important because they may be used as a feedback to modify or improve in the next cycle of facility performance evaluation processes. What are the benefits of performance evaluation? Short-term benefits related to immediate design decision. Maybe you need to make some, change some painting 
from the way your painting was before. Then medium terms is medium term benefit that you gain is between three to five years period, which is related to what generating useful information for future projects. Possibly, if your just a minute, please. If your first, uh, your facility management company, you are into project as well, you could do your performance evaluation on one of the facilities you already have that is existing and try as much as possible not to repeat some of the mistakes that is you are currently battling with in that facility in the current project that is ongoing. Or possibly some of those things that you have done in the current facility that is of excellent importance, that is very good, you can sustain them and make sure you replicate the same thing in the current project that is ongoing. Then the long-term benefit stands between 10 to 25 years uh, related to improving long-term performance of the building and to justify major expenditure. That is more or less like your capital expenditure. They are always difficult involved in establish a clear link among user assessment because at times, when you do your assessment, when you do your performance evaluation, <coughs> what the end user are actually uh, requesting might not be what is actually tenable currently, and might not be what you have the financial capacity to provide, and might not be what you can attend to immediately. But most of the time, you can use what is referred to as chain relationship most of the time to resolve it and keep communicating. Yes, we've seen your request. It's not that we are going, we are actually neglecting your request. The only thing is that we don't have the financial capacity to get this done, but we already have this in plan. In the next five, six months, you are going to see this coming into reality within this facility. Or possibly they might be requesting for the current generator you have cannot provide the 24 hour power supply. You can tell them we've already have a plan to provide a new generator that is going to give us 24 hour power supply, but this has already been uh, proposed and budgeted for next calendar year. Kindly bear with us. These are means of using relationship to resolve all these kind of challenges that we might come across when we're doing our performance and evaluation. Now, and that's the reason why they said that is the relationship between facility design and performance evaluation is always complex and fusing because at times the way the facility is being constructed and designed might not be, might not give the room to implement what and what are majorly priority within the performance evaluation that you conducted. When, how do you conduct a successful performance evaluation? Develop a clear understanding about what the organization wants to achieve. Like I, I've been saying it earlier, I've been saying it, and I'll still continue to say it. Whatsoever more you want to do must be in the power view of the company vision and mission, and it must be aligned to the entire organization's strategic goal. Develop a clear statement about what the organization wants to achieve. Link between evaluation and stated requirement to link between evaluation and stated requirements have to be explicit and easy to trace. It must not be deviate, it must not deviate from the stated requirements. Identify resources available to carry out your facility performance evaluation. What are those um, resources that you have on ground now? Match data collection analysis to the available time and budget. Determine appropriate methodology. Are you going to uh, use questionnaire that you're going to send to them via mail, or you are going to print out the questionnaire out and tribute by hand. Inform respondents or occupants about the purpose of their involvement and how the data will be used. Please and please, when you send survey to possibly tenants within this an estate, make sure the survey you are sending out are survey that when you get their report, there are something that you can implement. And when you send something out, if that cannot be implemented, please let there be a feedback and a clear communication to reason why that cannot be implemented. So that when next you are sending a survey out, 
People won't take it as if they are just wasting their time. And as long as you keep communicating and you let them know the impact of that something that they are carrying out, how that is going to impact them as a tenant, they will definitely respond. These are what you need to do in order to achieve a successful evaluation. Establish performance goal based on the existing as well as changing trends. Interpret and synthesize performance evaluation finding in a useful way for the likely user. Make results available for action by different groups of stakeholders. Suggest way to consolidate FPA results and lesson learned as organization memory. Develop an effective method to disseminate the consolidated data. A record of past projects may serve as good justification for future facility performance evaluation. These are what you need to put in place to achieve a successful performance evaluation. So benefit of evaluative building system. The feedback loop to enhance continuous work improvement process. Improve fit between occupants and their building. The optimization of service to suit occupants. Then the reduction of waste of space and energy. Evaluation of occupant revenue because with your evaluation, you'll be able to know what are what are the most requests of all the occupants within the facility. Then reduce ownership or operational expenses. And last, it improves competitive advantage in the marketplace because somebody will tell us you that some of my friends are living in a Lafarge estate and me and even having the plan to go to that Lafarge estate because they have good road network there, they have good security. This is telling you that you are, they are actually comparing market in the marketplace of estate. They're already comparing you with another estate who has edge ahead of you. And they're already telling you the reason why that particular estate has an edge ahead of you. And they're already offering to you, open your eyes to what you needed to do, what you needed to put in place to retain the current tenant and to ensure that to also gain in more con tenants coming into that facility. And don't forget, the more influx of tenants, the more increase in rent. And the more your estate is becoming more or less like a five-star estate that tenants are ready to pay for. Because most of the time, people are actually paying for value, not just the building per se. So what are the idea? What are the challenges that you may come across when you are implementing performance evaluation? Fragmented incentive and benefits within the procurement and operation processes. Lack of agreed and reliable indicator because what you have on ground and what the occupant or the end users are, re are requesting are not in synergy. But at times, you use the relationship to make sure you realign them. Potential liability for owner. This is what they are requesting for and this is what you have now. And you know that if you are to provide everything that they are, every of their requests, you are more or less running into what? Millions of naira of debt, which is more or like a what? Liability. Exclusion from current delivery expectation then. Exclusion from professional what? Curriculum. These are part of the challenges that you can have when you are implementing performance evaluation. There is no general, there's generally no money set aside for FPEs. Sometimes FP may require a considerable amount of time which may not mostly be available. Organization may not have, may not always have people with necessary skill to conduct facility performance evaluation. And don't forget, professionals don't, often don't like, do not like to have their work judged by other professionals because at times, this may require you to get a third party to come around, to come and evaluate your facility for you. And by the time the report comes out, you might be seeing it as if Somebody is trying to reach on to you. Somebody is trying to like say what you are doing is not good or you are not putting the best in place. You wish to you as a professional, you believe you are doing your best. But at times when you get an external body to come and do performance evaluation for you, it goes a long way. When you get reputable company, not as in because there was a time a student raised uh, that uh, issue that he asked one of his colleagues to come out evaluate his performance for him and the colleague is more like trying to take over his job. When you have a reputable company who can do this for you and you have the financial capacity to do it, please go ahead 
and get it done. But when the financial capacity is not available, you can still get this done within your team, within you and your team. And uh, with this, we're actually going to come to question and answer section. So um, I think I have Mr. Uh, let me check, Kukama the other time. You, Mr. Kukama, you have pronounced that name very well. Please pardon me. You raised the question the other time. I think it's time for you to answer. I'll ask your question now. Ukakama, okay. Ukabaka. Mr. Ukabaka, please go ahead with your question. Let me first attend to you before others. So please use the raising up icon to raise up your hand if you have any question to ask, please. Mr. Okamaka. Go ahead, please. I want your speaker and ask your question. Hello? Hello, ma. Go ahead, ma. Can you hear me? I can hear you, ma. Uh -huh. You mentioned a uh, sort of a uh, life cycle of uh, facilities. I don't understand. How do you calculate? Okay. When you're talking about life cycle cost, the cost is in uh the cost you use to uh, procure a particular asset, the cost of installation. Cost of transportation, the cost of operation and maintenance of that particular asset, plus the cost of decommissioning or demolition or selling of the asset. That is the total life cycle cost of that particular asset. But when you are talking about total cost of ownership, total cost of ownership includes the cost you incur during the planning stage, during the design stage, during the manufacturing stage, um, installation and commissioning, operation and maintenance, decommissioning, salvage, and uh, disposal of an asset. That is the total cost of ownership of an asset. I hope you get it right, ma'am. Okay, thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you. You're much welcome, ma'am. Okay, questions, please. But let's just try to ensure that the question we are going to ask is not among those questions, uh, those questions in the exercise. Those ones are for you to answer and submit as an assignment. Good evening, evening, please. I have a question. Good evening, sir. Can you hear All right, me? My okay. Can you I hear me, sir? Let's hold on. I have two people speaking at the same time. Mr. Jamin, let me attend to you first. Then okay. after Mr. Jamin, Mr. Uh, what is okay. the other person? Mr. Julius, you come in after Mr. Jamin. Can you hear me, sir? Good morning, sir. Mr. Jamin, Mr. Jamin, go ahead. I can hear you. Okay. So uh, it's just, uh, it's, I just want to bring out something and which I don't know, maybe it's uh, it's applicable to the rules of the of the training. So okay. uh, it's just an observation, like like last week now that uh, 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 you taught us about uh, access management. So okay. I want to bring out something like: Is it possible that on each every uh, class, like okay. access management now, if there is need, if there is like two weeks ago, thanks to Mass Megod, two weeks ago I was finding it difficult to get some vendors. But by the time I, you know, place my uh, request on the platform, they have been able to give me one or two people, which I'm working with presently. So I don't mind. I just, just like a suggestion: like, Is it possible that every class you take, 
like access manager, okay, if there is need for you to, you know, to purchase a tag or something, this is the contact. I'm just saying that on, so I'll just use that as an example. Is it possible for something like that to be happening? You, you, you can liaise with Mr. Paul. I'm okay, so sure thank you. you okay. Because okay, I think he has a lot of he has a lot of vendor can do as well asset management and so you can liaise thank with Mr. Paul. Okay, you thank you very much. Yeah, thank much you. Fun. So thank Mr. You. Julius, go back to you, sir. All right, good evening, sir. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, sir. Okay, so uh, so from my understanding, um, I just want to ask maybe um, for a clearer understanding of um, something. I want okay. to believe that this particular um, lecture tonight centers around an existing structure that either you want to take from yes. uh, an owner or, or you want to manage. Yes. Okay. It, is so I want around, it is centered around existing structure. Just all like right, right. The, if, if, if a building construction was carried out, a complete estate yes. has completed, and this is to be handed over to you to manage as a facility management company. The first and foremost, despite the fact that the building is still new, you need to conduct a condition assessment so that you know exactly oh. what is the current, that the estate is still new doesn't mean the estate will not have a challenge. Because the bottom line is that once you sign an agreement, you can't go back to the owner of the uh, facility and tell them that, oh, sorry, you didn't know that the generator is not a new one. Oh, sorry, you didn't know that it's a Tokumbo television that was installed in one of the rooms. That's why it is very, very key. Because you are taking over a new facility or you are taking over a facility from another facility company, you must conduct a facility condition assessment. Thank you so much. It's well you're understood. Much, you're much welcome, Mr. Julius. Okay. More questions, please. We still have enough time. Okay. Madam Grace, go ahead, please. Good evening, sir. Good evening, Madam Grace. Well done for today's lecture. Well done, sir. Thank you very much. I wanted to ask for the access register, is it can we get a template? Is it possible for people like us that have not rated anything in that regard? Okay. You can you can discuss with um you can discuss with um, Barakat. Barakat will help you out. I think there is a I think there is a there is a there is a there is one that has already been designed. And uh, that will still serve as a pilot for you to do yours in yeah. where you are working currently. Because if you are working in on a gas environment, your asset register will be different from somebody who is working in the real estate. Likewise, your asset register will be different from somebody who is working in an aviation industry. But you are all facility manager. Thank you so much, sir. You're much welcome. Okay, Mr. Michael Koro. Yes. Good evening, sir. Good evening, class. Good evening, Mr. Mike. Thank you, sir, for all our wonderful session. So, uh, you, my man. question is uh, as regards uh, um, how facility condition assessment helps to focus the cost of uh, asset replacement. So, I, I, I'm not really clear about this. So, for example, what will this will this be able to give one an estimated cost of the uh, asset, or is that Okay, no, sure. let, 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 let's take for an, for an example. You want to, you need, you need to rent an office apartment. And the tenant has already told you that everything you needed is provided for within that, uh, within that office. And by the time you got there, you discover that the air conditioning is not working when you do your assessment. And the landlord said, okay, go ahead and get the air conditioning repaired. And you call one of your vendors to go and assess the air condition. And the vendor came back, tell you that the outdoor fan is bad. You need to replace the compressor is bad. You need to replace the indoor fan is bad. And by the time you calculate, the cost of new air condition is around 240,000 euros. I'm just using that as an example. And by the time you calculate how much you're going to spend, it's getting to roughly between 150 and 170,000 euros. To me, it makes more economic... Um, 
uh, understanding for you to replace that particular air condition. But if the cost we want to spend is just 20,000 naira, why? Go ahead and spend that money. This is what you start to gain when you do your performance assessment. And you can just remember that when we're discussing that, as I said, after you have done your assessment, you come up with your report, you do the summary of your report, you cannot send your vendors out to go and assess that thing and give you quotations in order to get that thing done. From the quotation they gave you, you'll be able to decide either to replace that particular asset or you want to replace. Then, hello, yes, sir. Okay, so back to your question the question you had. So now, you've already, so most of the time, it's not basically because the cost, the cost of replacement and the cost of repair is almost of the same time. At times, sustainability could require you to make an actual replacement. Competitiveness could require you to make a replacement. Then, um, environmental, because at times, the environment where the facility is situated, if there is environmental impact, on the material you use, you can decide to vouch for another material that is going to sustain the impact of that environment, uh, uh, environmental impact on that facility. So most of the time, it's not cost per se, but at times, if you consider the cost of replacement and the cost of repair, it's coming to exactly almost the same thing. The best is for you to make an actual replacement. So I hope no, that answers your question. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. Any other question, please? Uh, in the cost of that kind of, of sir, please in the cost, so in the cost of that kind of replacement, do you do you have an agreement that if we are living at the end of our um, lease year, we are moving it and then putting yours that we are taking out back to replace it back? It's all depend. It's, it's all depend on what the agreement says, and that's where that's where we discuss the uh, schedule of the dilapidation. If you are if you are if you are, if you are taking an apartment for lease, the landlord can tell you that this is the way I want, and that's why you see most uh, most uh, most uh, most offices now. If you check during the design stage, they are more or less like completely open office. Most builder when they construct a building for office apartment, they make it to be open. So when you come to take over that particular uh, space, you use all this palette for all this, uh, your passport glass and everything to demarcate, demarcate your office so that anytime, any day you want to leave, it is easier for you to remove all those things and leave the entire complete floor the way it was when you came in, when you come in. So by and large, because of the fact that you may need to screw some of these um, frames and every other thing, you could tamper with some of some tiling works within that place. Those one might require to spend minimum amount of money. No, any there's no any tenant, uh, there's no any landlord that will ask you to retain your assets within their facility when you are going. No, you can take your facility, you can take your assets, it's your property. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Yeah, more question, please. Okay, Mr. Okay, Mike, are you still having your hand on? Yeah, yes, sir. So it's uh we got the last statement you made that uh, no, no landlord will ask you to retain your property uh that uh, it belongs to you, you can always take it. So and um, you also emphasize that it also depends on the contract agreement. So yes. like uh I have experienced a, a, a situation where, where that uh, we we had um uh, the, 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 the FM team came and they demarcated uh, the open space during the outfit. And there was this agreement that as long as you're living, as you, when, when you're living, you don't have to touch anything structural. So any demarcation, any material you use, you have to leave it. So, it, the, so I, is, 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 is it a law? Because it's based, based on what you said now, that there's no landlord that will ask you to... to, there's, not, no, to there's, no, there's no any law like that. As long as okay. it has already been spelled out in the agreement that when you are leaving, you are not taking anything out when you want to leave, and you've already signed that you agreed with that, you can't take it when you are going. 
And possibly, okay. don't forget that that might have caused the landlord to reduce some part of the rent in order to cater for what you are actually going to leave behind when you are going. That might have caused the landlord to reduce the rent at a certain percentage. But if you rent an apartment and you are the one that provided your asset that you are using within that apartment and it is not spread out, you didn't sign an agreement that you are going to leave where you are going. When you want to leave, you can take your, you can take your property. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, sir. You're much welcome. So, more question, please. More questions, please. We still have like 10 minutes to go, so we can see, attend to some beautiful questions, please. Thank you, engineer. Yeah, can you be a bit louder? Can you I can hear you. Can... What do you say? Okay, it's tried not raise my hand. Uh, okay, it's, it's, it's better now. It's, it's better now, Mr. Okay, okay. Uh, what I'm trying to say is that, um, um, thank you very much. Um, Where's the noise is coming from? Go ahead, sir. Okay. Oh, okay, okay. I, 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 I so much like this topic. Um, it's very rich and um, is uh, is very nice for us to apply it. Things like um, uh, we want someone want to um, uh, when the company wants to rent an office building, it's better for for the facility manager to first of all to assess the condition of the building before and uh, note, note down the places, the areas that needs repairs and maintenance before packing in. So that's a very nice one. But I would like, um, uh, what's her name? Um, the name is Angela Kila, No, 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 the train manager has instructed okay. her. Yeah, for okay. to help us with a sample of uh, uh, such a plan. As a so condition, I, okay, facility condition assessment format. Yeah, yes, yeah, yes. Okay, uh, Barakat will actually, Barakat will definitely do that. Oh, okay, okay. Thank you, Paul. Yeah. That, that would be very nice. She will definitely do that. Yeah. I so I think that is the worst 